Let's get educated. That's why we're here, to bring you the stories impacting K-12 classrooms and college campuses. It's time for a little education. Hello everyone, I am Katie Patrick, and as always, I'm joined by that man sitting over to my left, your right, David Fiorazzo. Yes, that's right. Yes, you're confirming you are in fact. I'm confirming I am camera right, Katie's left. Stage left. Stage, Stage left, is right. that how it works? You're the actor, not me. All right, well, David, uh, let us know. Today was another day yes. where you had some worldview matters to discuss. Who did you discuss with today? Yes, J.B. Hickson, Dr. J.B., pastor from Colorado, not by Works Ministries, had a great conversation with him. Um, Want to remind you to subscribe at worldviewmatters.tv. And as we ask you to do with Educated, please share. Hmm, all the nice things about it. Yes, share. Yes. Well, share and care. I just need to give you a quick reminder since you gave them a quick reminder. Yeah. Now it's my turn. So sure. a quick reminder for you from me that if you enjoy watching our videos uh, or any videos that aren't censored, please, if you would follow our Rumble channel, simply go to rumble.com slash Freedom Project and uh, do the follow. And then can you share off of that too? Share, follow, yes. like, subscribe. Yeah. All repost, the fun things. repost or share or... Such terminology yeah. we have around here. All right. Well, uh, speaking of education, because that's what we talk about here on this show, we're going to talk about some things that aren't so kind, but they are of worldly matters. So we're just combining things right yep, now. We are. We have a college student at Cornell who uh, made some national headlines because he was arrested for posting online threats to, you know, slitting the throats of Jewish students on campus. David. Yes. What kind of what kind of education are they offering over there? Okay, here's the thing when you talk about college campuses, we should it would anything surprise us at this point? I I'm mm. honest question to you watching and listening. Would anything that you would hear um re regarding the corrupt or warped worldview that they are endorsing on the college campus when it comes to this kind of stuff, the anti-Semitism or really it's Jew hatred, would anything surprise us? I mean, we've gone through the spectrum of the LGBTQIA and all that. We've gone through the ridiculous things on socialism, on Black Lives Matter, social justice, CRT, uh, SEL, DEI, and now we have another die. Ah, but it, it's we just do. spelled differently. Spelled um, so there's a young man named Patrick Dye. He's a 21-year-old, and uh, he's charged with threatening to slaughter Jewish students. He's a junior at Cornell University. So we're going to watch this news clip video, and we'll come back, and we'll talk more about it. As state police stand guard outside the Cornell Center for Jewish Living, the U.S. attorney for the Northern District of New York says University Junior, 21-year-old Patrick Dye, has been arrested for posting anti-Semitic threats online, including, if you see a Jewish person on campus, follow them home and slit their throats. My family, last night we had a discussion whether it's safe for me to be on campus or whether I should come back home. The feds say Mr. Dye is from the Rochester area and faces charges of posting threats to kill or injure another using interstate communications. The complaint alleges he also posted he would shoot up 104 West, the university's kosher dining hall, among other violent messages. You may think that you can be anonymous and post what you want, but there will be consequences. The arrest comes a day after Governor Hochul increased state police presence at campuses statewide and met with Jewish students at Cornell. Just because it was one person doesn't mean that's the sole uh, reason to be afraid. It does not feel like we're living in 2023. It feels like we're living in Nazi Germany. How can you think about your classes uh, or anything? It seems so mundane when your life is literally being threatened. So there's a lot going on here, but that last comment, it feels like it's Nazi Germany. Uh, we recently had a fallback with the clocks, and uh, some people because of the indoctrination on college campuses and through the liberal media and the Democrat Party. They think we're falling back to 1939 uh. in, in Nazi Germany. Uh, lots to talk about here, Katie, but uh, about this young gentleman. I don't blame these young people for feeling unsafe. I mean, this is not like they, the safe spaces that are a mockery. We've, we've joked about. This is a serious thing because one person said it openly, this uh, uh, die, Patrick Dye, 
Um, but a lot of people are endorsing this, thinking about it, and secretly believing similar things than he is. Just your, your thoughts on this whole thing. Well, it, it, what's so fascinating about this situation in terms of comparisons of we've had this happen on college campuses time and time again of just the statement of what well, it's like we're in Nazi Germany without actually understanding the true historical context of what oh, Nazi geez. Germany was doing. And I can use the term literally it is the hating of the Jews and thinking the Jewish people should not exist yeah. simply for being Jewish. <clears throat> This is the exact same thing. Now, what we've gotten over the past five, six, seven years is this is like Nazi Germany because of something LGBTQ related, because kids just don't understand what's happening in the world and they just want to claim like their world is woe is me sort of thing. This is exactly the same thing because, because it is hatred of the Jews. So to make that historical reference and, and like comparison is appropriate. Yes. However... Um, what we have seen for years and years is too much, too many times people just using it improperly. Right. Now, when, when he is making direct threats about slitting the throats of Jewish people, then th that's a lot more than just saying like, hey, I think <clears throat> what you are doing is a sin. Big comparison, like v drastic differences, That's you know, the, when we when yeah. we compare it to the other ones. So this this is very much more serious than some of the things we've yeah. seen in the past. I'm not sure where he's at. Um, Israel is fascist, uh, all these other things going on. But he's that's not going to shoot up 104 West, the yeah, kosher. But the slitting the yeah. throats, that's out of the Quran. For those of you that don't realize, um, Muhammad was a vicious warrior and uh, murdered a lot of people. And there are verses in the Quran about attacking Jews and wherever you would find them, right? And slitting the throats of the infidels, whatever else. But I want to just share this young man, 21-year-old junior at Cornell, served as a winter orientation leader a couple years ago and an orientation supervisor from March 2021 to February 2022. And his parents, his parents said, they told the New York Post that they don't believe their son posted the messages because they say he has been in such a deep depressive state since 2021, so two years ago, that he's incapable of controlling himself, a depression that began one year into his university studies. So this opens up a whole nother conversation we don't have a lot of time for, Katie, because, um, yeah, kids, because of what they're being fed, K through 12 and on social media and TikTok and everything else and that their lives are purposeless, that they are not created by God. There is no God. And so everything is random. So they hear these talking points about being pro-Palestine and whatever else. They're going to go along with it, but they're depressed themselves. They have no hope. And so this kid, he, they, his parents said he's incapable of controlling himself. So that is a danger to some of the students there, yes, right? It most certainly is. And it, it may have the timing of it being 2021, the world still was shut down for, or had really yeah. been shut down for his past year. So that's something to consider. We'll see what happens with that story. He yep. faces a max term of five years in prison. So we'll see. But it, this is not an isolated incident. This no. is happening all over the country at universities all over the country, including um, at Drexel University, where we had a Jewish student who was targeted in an apparently anti-Semitic incident just days after, as we know, Hamas's deadly terror attacks. Now, uh, the was there was an email from the Drexel Public Safety Office that was sent out to the students the morning after the fire on the evening of October 10th, okay? October 7th was when Hamas attacked. October 10th, just a couple days after, all of a sudden, this student's door looks like, as if you're watching on screen right now, that. Because it sudden. was a fire was set yes, to it. Just it was suddenly. set on fire. It said no other door was vandalized, and the student believed she was targeted due to her outspoken support of Israel. And police are investigating. Okay. So the Drexel Public Safety Office let everyone know. And according to the email, the Philadelphia Fire Department responded and it was determined that decorations on a residence hall door had been intentionally set on fire. Well, then. Yeah, these are just a few examples we're giving you, friends, but be very cautious about what's happening right now in our culture. The number one group that is targeted for hate crimes is Jews right now, our Jews. 
Uh, you probably didn't realize that because the LGBTQ always plays the victim and all, all this and that. But no, Jew, it, look it up. Anyway, still to come, a Jewish high school in New Jersey is now prohibiting college visits from schools that have not publicly declared they will defend Jewish students on campus. We're talking about that next. So with all of the threats that have, you know, and the attacks, I guess the threats and the attacks uh, that have been happening on college campuses, we have one Jewish high school in New Jersey that is taking action about all of it. Um, and they are going to determine which colleges then are allowed on their own campus. So we're talking about Torah Academy of Bergen County. They issued a statement saying that colleges who have not explicitly said and provided a written plan of action. I love it. They have to back it up with a written plan of action. Um, on detailing how those Jewish students would be safe on the college campus. Those colleges, if they don't do all that, are not going to be allowed to recruit at the Torah Academy uh, High School. Hmm. So the letter went on to stress the importance of college leadership standing up to protect Jewish students. It says, while anti-Semitic hate crimes have been steadily increasing in recent years. And yes, again, yes. David, we knew that. A lot of you might not know that because, oh, all we see is the, the rainbow out there and all of their <laughs> cries of... They're victims. Their they're, victimhood they're status. They're so oppressed, Katie. They have to be the most oppressed of all the oppressed. <laughs> or, or they're just even more oppressed by not being oppressed enough. Oh, I tell you. I'm not impressed. Ooh. <laughs> so, uh, while anti-Semitic hate crimes have been steadily increasing in recent years, they have become alarmingly brazen in recent weeks. The conditions for Jewish students on many college campuses are intolerable. We are carefully monitoring the statements that universities have or have not issued, scrutinizing actions that college administrators have taken, and hearing directly from our alumni about the discrimination they are currently experiencing. We applaud the leaders who have written to university presidents to express their shock and disappointment for their dereliction of duty to ensure the safety of their Jewish students. So all these universities who have things happening on their college campuses, and they're just kind of like, what? I don't see anything. Nothing to see here. They are not going to be allowed to go on to the uh, Torah Academy campus and try to recruit students. Good on them. Yeah. That's what I got to say. Yeah, I just have to say thank you. Uh, good story. It's a shame that it's come to this. Yeah, basically. I, I really, because I, I think... And this is our media, again, is complicit in a lot of the evil we're seeing in our culture. This is flown under the radar, this Jew hatred. The, I mean, anti-Semitism is too kind a word. It is Jew hatred. <laughs> and that's, that's what's happening. And yeah, we need to know our history so we don't repeat it. But kids in schools are not learning what happened in Nazi Germany. And they're, they've bought into this um, Israel is the colonizer, right? They're, they're, they're the oppressor. When you look at a map of Israel surrounded by whoa, whoa, all these... Oh, that's geography. We can't, yeah, we can't oh, okay, look at geography. Okay, geography, right. We can't look at maps. We can't understand what's going no, on no. over there in the Middle Colonizers East. Colonizers made those maps. It is really astounding, friends, the, the extent of, of the lies and the propaganda. There is a war that we're not uh, doing too well in right now here in America, and that is the propaganda war. This is true prophetic you are all right just to wrap this one up the the letter they wrote talks about how before college representatives can enter their building they have to bring a statement from the university leadership Good. detailing their plans to protect and maintain the safety and security of our graduates on their campuses as jews we will continue to communicate to each college our serious concerns about the hostile environment permitted on their campuses based on the trends and incidents um we are so closely tracking i like it yes that's right. Thank you. That's called protection and actually caring about the students that you have within your buildings for when they go out into the rest of the world. Good on them. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we've been talking about it uh, for some time now. What's that? All the time. And now, <laughs> of all places, the Washington Post, WAPO, has Ugh. confirmed that homeschool homeschooling has indeed become America's fastest growing form of education. And public school enrollment... I wonder why. Free falling. I don't know why, David, but we're going to talk about it next. Today's show is sponsored by our friends at MyPillow. Save up to 66% on pristine quality bedding, towels, slippers, signature pillows, and much more when you use the code EDUCATED. That's E-D-U-C-A-T-E-D. -E educated. 
Support this show and a great American company. So I always love it when uh, the Washington Post, WAPO, has to come out with a story that I know, I can almost guarantee, triggered the writers who had to actually type it out. Uh, Homeschooling is working. (laughs) Yeah, they hate hate reporting on that, but I wonder how they, how did they report on this, Katie? Oh, they did a little analysis and it took all of five people in the byline to have to write this story. So the original story that, that the Washington Post put out. And uh, I think it's hilarious. It probably was like, no, you write it. No, you write it. I don't want to write it. We each take one sentence and then we'll write the whole story together. <laughs> the title of the original story is Homeschooling's Rise from Fringe to Fastest Growing Form of Education. <gasps> triggered. Uh-oh. I'm triggered. I'm not. But the analysis that uh, WAPO conducted was based on the data that they collected for thousands of school districts across the country. And it reveals that a dramatic rise in homeschooling at the onset of the pandemic has largely sustained itself Hmm. through the 2022-2023 academic year. And that defied predictions that the families would just, you know, oh, I'm just going to come on back. After that pandemic's over, I'm just going to go on back to my little public school and everything's going to be hunky-dory over there, David. Um, What are are we looking at there? What's the red? That's the homeschoolers, right? Yes. Yes, that's the the increase. That's pretty... I mean, that's a that's a big gap there between. That's a uh, that's a percentage jump that you <laughs> look at the public that the private and public schools don't want to see. The homeschoolers are like, yeah, we're doing it, but they don't know they're doing it because they're just at home doing school. They're not paying yeah. attention to all. They're learning. They're, they're actually, actually learning. learning. <laughs> they're busy. They're busy. Uh, but that's why the rest of you can see this now. The growth does demonstrate that uh, homeschools. Arrival as a mainstay of the American educational system with its impact on society, public schools, and above all, on hundreds of thousands of children now learning outside a conventional academic setting only is beginning to be felt. I love that WAPO has to say these things, that they have to write this, because you know they're just, oh. Um, Now, here's the issue, of course, when you collect data, and we're on homeschool data and schooling data in general, because you don't want to give away all the secrets of things. Obtaining accurate information about the homeschooling population in the U.S. is a bit challenging, rightfully so. Mm -hmm. Now, in 11 states, including Texas, Michigan, Connecticut, and Illinois, officials actually don't require notification when families decide to educate their kids at home or monitor how those students are actually faring. And seven additional states have unreliable tallies of homeschooled kids. It could actually be higher, is, Mm. is basically what it is now in states with comparable enrollment figures the number of homeschool kids increased 51 percent over the past six school years and as you saw on that on the the graph it outpaced the seven percent growth in the private school enrollment and public school enrollment dropped four percent in those states over that same period more but at least you know at least it's something going in the right direction well and it all depends too on who's having babies and where they're going to school and all that stuff. You know, a lot of, a lot of things to factor in here. Now, homeschooling's surging popularity crosses every measurable line of politics, geography, and demographics. Again, WAPO had to admit this. Whew. The number of homeschooled kids has increased 373% over the past six years. In just the small city of Anderson, South Carolina, it has increased 358% in a school district in the Bronx. So huh. we're talking everybody across the board. So so listen here, everyone out there who assumes that it's just you little podunkers out in the in the south or in the Midwest in your tiny, tiny towns and all you, I'm going to say it, hicks out there. No, 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 no. This is across the board. This is across political parties. This is, oh, dare I say it, actually a desire for people to want children to get an education regardless of their politics, of mm. their race, of their gender, of all of the things. We are seeing an increase in homeschooling because people are starting to be like, well, you know what? We have future generations coming up and they're eventually one day going to take over and have to take care of us. So do we want a population that is literate or illiterate? You tell me. Ones that can add two plus two or ones who are like, mm. check, I'm, check my TikTok, right? <laughs> I think I told you yeah. I had a high schooler the other day 
could not tell me how many quarters go into a dollar. Oh, could come not count on. back. Surely you jest. I do not jest, unfortunately. That was this season at the farm I work at. Yeah. Mm hmm. So could, had trouble. Couldn't do it. You, you Can't know. count back quarters and change. Wow. High school. So, anyway, I'm very excited. If you take a look at your own mm. state, uh, every state seemed to be growing a little bit there. There's a several that don't have any data but is your state up there how much growth did you have and of course you're going to see a lot of the growth coming from a lot of the very large states like new york mm -hmm. california huge increase huge 103 percent new york right the enrollment for homeschooling kids mom took attendance says it's 103 percent growth 78 percent out in california 94 percent in south dakota 77% in Tennessee, 108% in DC school. I wonder why on that one as well. Hmm. So very exciting to see. Let us know uh, what's happening with in your neck of the woods. But still to come, we got to get Starbucks out of the way because we have a Wisconsin business owner who just created a new way to automate coffee on the go. <gasps> Java. Just wait until you see how high tech this new age coffee shop really is. That's coming up. If you have a smartphone, tablet, Roku, or Apple TV, consider downloading the Freedom Project media app. It's 100% free and includes all of our weekly shows, plus lecture series, archive programs, and award-winning animated videos for families like the Presidential Minute, Battles of America, and Heroes of the West. Don't rely on the social media giants to keep you informed. Simply download the Freedom Project media app from your app store and allow notifications. And we'll let you know when a new video is ready. Okay, coffee lovers. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Th this is an interesting story. Octane Coffee. It's a new automated coffee stop. They call it a coffee shop um, in Waukesha, Wisconsin. And some say it's disrupting the industry. Um, well, I don't typically go through drive throughs but occasionally I do. But for people that are in the habit of doing it Monday through Friday, this is an interesting story. Watch this uh, video. We'll come back and talk about it. This is an automated coffee shop called Octane Coffee. There are no employees here pouring drinks. This is how it works. From anywhere, you can put in your order through the mobile app and it provides you with a QR code. The software tracks your location so when you're about two minutes away, your coffee gets prepared. Pull up to the window, scan your QR code, and the window will open. You grab your pumpkin spice cold brew and enjoy. Isn't a human-made latte better? Isn't there some artistry or some love? And I would say no. Every drink that we make, every coffee extraction is a chemistry experiment. If you don't control the variables, you're going to have a bad time. Adrian Deasy is the founder and CEO. Octane Coffee officially opened at the beginning of October. Inside this container is a highly sophisticated robotic system of proprietary technology that I could only film a portion of. It can make everything from hot chai teas to iced caramel lattes that cost an average of four to five dollars. The latte art could use some work though. Octane Coffee partnered with local companies like Stone Creek, Pilcrow Coffee, and nearby dairies for all of its ingredients. The only time an employee is needed is for resupplying. The goal is to speed up the coffee buying experience. Adrian argues the majority of people don't sit in cafes. They grab and go. It's got to be a faster, better customer experience. And so the idea of Octane Coffee was really that we sell time with a great cup of coffee. <laughs> to speed, speed up, because it takes so long to brew a cup of coffee. I mean, if people are in that big of a hurry. Okay, Katie, there's so much involved here. A lot of people uh, like to sit in the coffee shops. Uh, but people with jobs typically don't. Uh, anyway, go ahead. What, what do you think about this well, uh, high-octane drive-up coffee that you can order from miles away or put in your order in advance, and then it tracks you? Uh-oh. Of course it tracks there's you. Another, there's another conversation for another time. Well, Adrian may argue that people don't sit in coffee shops, but I sit in coffee shops. So but you have a job. I work. You have two jobs. I Here's my... Here it is. It's all on your laptop. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I enjoy being in the atmosphere of a coffee shop. So Octane's not do. for me, but for when those of you age. who, huh? 
<laughs> said, when I was your age, oh, yeah, you I right. used to enjoy sitting there in the coffee shop. Uh-huh, and uh-huh. I, you Eating know poop. what, though? I get, I get too distracted. I, right. Oh, my goodness. My just to concentrate and do something. Yeah, I, I admire people it that can do that. zones me in. It zones me in because really? other people are there working, so it zones me in. I'm okay. very competitive. If I see someone else. Well, I'm working, a people I watcher, get, too, so that's a problem. Zone in. Um, but yeah, so but what about this idea of? Let's go back to actual making a good cup of yeah. coffee. It's people order so many different combinations mm-hmm. now with di- cream or sugar or a latte or a, a, f- a frap or a cold brew, all these different things. So those machines have to be so finely tuned. We'll I, see if they can do that. It would be interesting yeah. to see because he wants to branch out. He wants, hey, coming to a state near you, Octane. There's already some interest in it. From Yes, there's actually yeah. interest of other people to put 200 them people out there. so far interested in franchising this thing. It'll be like the new subway, but not at all. Wow. So there'll be that. But it'll be interesting to see if it is successful or if they can make the variation combinations or if it's kind of like black coffee for you, hot cocoa for you, very basic, just vanilla latte for you. So... Eh, we'll see see what happens. I don't know. I personally won't enjoy a cup of that octane because I want to enjoy. Sorry, no photography. I wonder what that was. Anyway, I um, give away the secrets. So the secrets. Yeah, Jeez. what what secrets? You're just seeing an arm come up with your coffee. So that's what he got. Yep. Yeah. There's there's a lot of variables involved. Power generator. If the power ever goes out, because it's so all automated. If there are, if there are no human beings in that. Uh, whatever and it's not a coffee shop but whatever the little building that, that everything's housed in there's a lot of electronics a lot of computerized so if the power goes out you got to have a backup generator and all this stuff so a lot of interesting or things. if it starts to think on its own ah. and then it takes over the world when does it become self-aware and make make its own coffee we'll see what happens <laughs> all right well don't you forget don't let a robot make you forget that you can catch <laughs> educated on the go by subscribing on your favorite audio podcast platform and don't forget to download the freedom project media app now for david and for Matthew, thank you for watching thank you for listening and thank you for supporting this show until next time stay educated